Port Arthur, the strategic harbor rented by Russia in China, is about to be attacked by the Imperial Japanese Navy. The first shots of the Russo-Japanese War are about to begin. Hi everyone, it's Simon once again. Japanese Admiral Togo wanted to launch a preemptive attack against Port Arthur at the night as soon as the war was declared. However, he didn't want to risk his precious battleships so close to the coastal gun batteries, so instead 10 torpedo boats made an attack against the unsuspecting ships on the night of 8 February 1904. At the time, Admiral Stark was holding a birthday party for his wife on the deck of the battleship Petropavlovsk when a series of explosions happened. The cruiser Palat and the battleships Retvizan and Cesarevich were each one hit by a torpedo. Believing that the Russian fleet had been extensively damaged during the night, Togo launched an attack with his battleships and cruisers against the anchorage during the day. But the Russian ships and shore batteries were now fully alert and fired back with all their might. The Japanese were able to cause some damage to the Russians, but they were also heavily hit on process, so Togo withdrew. The Russians suffered damage on some units and the inexistence of a large dry dock at the harbor made repairs quite difficult. Also, on the same day, a Japanese squadron of cruisers heavily damaged the protected cruiser Variag and the gunboat Koryetsk on the Battle of Shemumpu Bay, near Incheon, Korea. Surrounded and greatly outnumbered, the Russians scuttled their ships after the battle to prevent their capture. Following these events, Admiral Stark was replaced by Admiral Makarov. Port Arthur was located on the Lyotong Peninsula in Manchuria, a large rural area with lots of open plains and rugged mountains. Army movement was difficult due to the terrain and the climate was harsh, extremely hot summers followed by long and cold winters with lots of mud that blocked the roads. To protect the ships in the harbor, the Russian mine layer Yenisei started to mine the entrance of the harbor, but unfortunately one of their own mines blew up, sinking it. The cruiser Boyerin approached the minefield to recover the survivors, but was also hit and sunk. Yenisei sank with a map with the position of all the mines, so navigating on that channel was now extremely risky for both sides. Following the Battle of Shimulpo Bay, Japanese troops occupied Korea and marched with speed up to the peninsula, arriving at Yellow River on the 25th of April. Crossing a river is one of the most difficult things for an army to do, since the defender has a massive advantage. This was the plan of the Russians, wait well entrenched on the riverbank and hold the Japanese forces there until an overwhelming number of troops could be gathered for the counterattack. The Russian generals expected reinforcements would arrive from Europe quite quickly, but the single-track Trans-Siberian Railway was incomplete and trains suffered constant delays, breakdowns or traffic jams. Amazingly, the first land battle of the war was, in many ways, a clear example of the overall superior leadership of the Japanese forces, since General Kuroki Tamemoto was able to trick the Russian general Zasulish to defend Antang, so he ignored reports of advancing enemy troops to the north, since he was convinced that they would attack to the south. He knew that the Japanese were busy doing something to the north, but yet he didn't send scouts. Meanwhile, the Japanese troops started the construction of a bridge on the south, attracting all the attention of the Russians. The mighty Yalu River was at its lowest ebb, being affordable on several places, so Kuroki spent his time making 10 bridges to the north and then advanced to the south, catching the Russians completely by surprise. Their field artillery, although not as advanced as the Russians, obliterated the Russians in open ground. The Yal River region was now on Japanese hands. After this defeat and the difficulty in receiving more troops and supplies, the Russian generals adopted a more defensive and passive fighting style. The Japanese exploited this, continuing their advance across the Laitong Peninsula in order to surround Port Arthur. It's important to remember that Russian soldiers and sailors were extremely brave and fought with determination during the war. Their only weakness was their leadership, 
Many of their best leaders died on the battlefield, leaving the troops with only inept commanders on the rear. After the news of the crossing of the Yellow River by the Imperial Japanese Navy, it was decided to scuttle some cargo ships at the entrance of the harbor, to block the Russian battleships there. After that, the army only needed to surround it and shell armless ships on the harbor. They made numerous attempts, but the Russians were always alert, and all attempts failed, resulting on the sinking of all the block ships. Meanwhile, Admiral Makarov arrived. He was a very energetic man, and the morale on the Russian ships was now extremely high, since they had, finally, a very competent commander and a national hero leading them. On the 13th of April, on board the battleship Petropavlovsk, he left the harbor together with two battleships, four cruisers and some destroyers to assist a Russian destroyer that was being attacked. However, this was a trap, because the Japanese fleet appeared on the horizon, so he decided to return to the protection of the shore batteries of the harbor. Unknown to him, the Japanese had dropped mines the day before at the entrance of the harbor, and his ships went directly towards them. Then, a colossal explosion hit Petropavlovsk, completely destroying the ship, sinking it in less than two minutes, taking with it 635 men and Admiral Makarov as well. Shortly after, the battleship Pobeda hit another mine, but luckily was able to return to port for repairs. Togo ordered the next day that all flags to be flown at half-mast, in memory of the his fallen adversary and his crew. The loss of Makarov was a severe blow for the Russians, since he was a famous and respected admiral who favored offensive operations. He was replaced by the passive Admiral Vichev, and the Russian fleet became a fleet in being. Time passed and Field Marshal Oyama Iawo, the commander-in-chief of the Imperial Japanese Army in Manchuria, had three armies at his disposal. 125,000 men and 170 artillery guns. Between April and August, his forces continued to defeat the Russian forces on a series of bloody land battles. On May 5th, the Japanese made a landfall on the Liatong Peninsula, supported by the Japanese Navy, just 60 kilometers from Port Arthur. Admiral Vichev at Port Arthur knew that the constant bombardment of the Japanese battleships was a problem, so he launched mines closer to the harbor. This idea was extremely successful. On 15 of May, the battleship Atsuse hit a Russian mine and started to sink. The battleship Yashima approached him to provide some support and also hit two mines. In a single day, Togo lost a third of his modern battleship force. To make things worse for the Imperial Japanese Navy, Although the most important uh, Russian naval forces were positioned at Port Arthur, a smaller Russian cruiser squadron operated from Vladivostok as well. This squadron forced the Japanese to transfer some of their ships from the blockade to protect the naval routes between Japan and Korea. But on 15 of June, the Russian squadron sank three Japanese troop ships on what was known as the Itachi Maru incident, with heavy losses for the Japanese. After these events, the Japanese recovered with the Battle of Nanshan, another costly disaster for the Russians. After they repulsed nine consecutive Japanese Banzai charges commanded by General Oku Yasukata, Russian General Fok ordered full retreat of all reserves and the destruction of their entire ammunition supply. These victories led to the capture of many artillery pieces and supplies which were then used against their former owners, so it's common to see photographs of Japanese soldiers operating these guns. With the start of July and the hot weather, the Imperial Japanese Army continued their advance. While some forces advanced east to besiege Port Arthur, others prepared for the next major land battle near Liyuang. Viceroy Yevgeny Alexeyev, commander of all Russian forces on combat area, was furious with constant defeats against the inferior Japanese, and he insisted with General Zasulich, Stackelberg and Krupatkin that they needed to stop the Japanese at all costs. This resulted on the disastrous smaller battles of Motian Pass, Tasishio and Himunsheng. The Japanese were unstoppable, 
mostly due to the poor logistics, lack of good communications and lower morale of the Russians. The Japanese generals, many of them former samurais, used to the ways of the war, like General Kuroki Tamimoto and Oko Yasukata, were able to better understand the battlefield, continuously encircling the Russian forces, and most importantly, had an army of soldiers who continued to advance, even if it was sure death. On the 1st of August, the Japanese forces finally surrounded Port Arthur. The longest and bloodiest battle of the war was about to begin. Port Arthur was defended by 50,000 men and more than 500 artillery pieces. The Russian Pacific Squadron was also present there, all of them heavily fortified with dozens of bunkers with machine guns, cannons and electrified barbed wire. Overlooking the harbor were a small group of hills, 174 meter hill and 203 meter hill, but if the Japanese conquered them, they could use their artillery to blast the blockaded Russian ships below. The Imperial Japanese army had 150,000 men and 500 artillery pieces for the attack, plus the navy of Admiral Togo, which was patrolling the entrance. On August 7, the Japanese started to shell the harbor, with some of their lighter long-range artillery, hitting the ships in harbor. The Russians now knew that the 1st Pacific Squadron needed to leave the harbor immediately to evade complete destruction. Viceroy Alexeyev insisted with the Tsar that the fleet should immediately leave while it was still possible. Admiral Vichev was forced to comply. Again, thank you so much for watching my videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe my YouTube channel and ring the bell to be notified of my new videos. For more info about my LEGO models, please visit my Flickr webpage. Thank you and see you next time.